This place, as crowded as a bustling shopping mall, is a crematorium in China. This is true of crematoriums in almost every city in China. This is a funeral home in Wuhan. The video shooter said she came to the funeral home at 4 a.m. to queue up and saw that there were already many people there. You see, there are so many vehicles that you can't see the end. You can see how serious this outbreak is. This is Jiangnan Funeral Parlor. It's horrendous. So many hearses. There was one lineup yesterday. Today, there are two lines that are as long as four kilometers. This is the crematorium in Shanghai. Most of the people I have interacted with have either been infected or tested positive in the past. In my personal estimation, the peak of infections appears to have arrived earlier than was reported. After the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, lifted the epidemic restrictions on December 7th, it was widely expected that the epidemic would break out quickly in China. Little did people know that the epidemic would not only break out, but come much faster, more aggressively, and be more terrifying than people expected. The outbreak has far surpassed any previous round of epidemics and swept through the entirety of China like a tsunami. You know, the hospital is just overwhelmed from top to bottom. So, you know, the, the ER filled up with people. A lot of them got admitted to the hospital. They're not getting better in a day or two, so there's no flow. Um, and therefore, people keep coming to the ER, but they, they can't go upstairs into hospital rooms, um, so they're stuck in the ER. Our daily workload is huge. At this moment, we have reached our emergency capacity of more than 530 patients. All the patients who come here have oxygen levels at only 50%, 60%, 70% or so. So we feel a lot of pressure when it comes to severe cases. Our medical staff fell ill one after another, and many colleagues are still working despite being sick. Doctors in China are so overworked they can hardly cope. China's health care system is very unequal. If you go to Beijing, they have so many uh, good hospitals. Then if you go to Shanghai, also not so bad. But if you go to third tier cities or like uh, rural areas, it's total a uh, different situation. Rural areas, if you call ambulance, they will not come to you within one hour. Even sometimes they will come to you within two or three hours. It's uh, impossible to, to handle some emergent uh, cases. The reality is that not only is the medical system in the metropolitan cities, including Beijing, close to collapse, but the outbreak has spread like wildfire to the rural areas of China. The scene of people lining up for IVs in the large cities has spread to the rural areas. Our editorial team has family and relatives in China. Recently, according to phone communications, more than 95% of their families, relatives, or friends have been infected. It's safe to say that every day now, more Chinese cities are being hit by the infection, leading to a near collapse of the hospital system and long lines at funeral homes. Look at the hearses of Nantong Funeral Parlor. So many. Look inside. Today I got the number 49, and 49 vehicles are lined up here. There are still many on the way. How many people have died?
It's 2 a.m. at the crematorium. People are still lining up. Look at this vehicle. It's a vehicle to deliver bodies. How far the line is. It's already 2 a.m. There are still so many vehicles. And there are at least 130 vehicles as far back as I can see. This is white paper money scattered by the living for the departing relatives all over the street. A male CCTV anchor appeared on air for six consecutive days from December 17th to the 22nd as the anchor of news broadcast, causing a lot of buzz among Chinese netizens. This most prominent official Chinese TV news program has a total of eight anchors divided into four crews. They rotate on a daily basis. It has led netizens to speculate that the remaining three male anchors have gone positive. On the other hand, his female anchor partner has appeared on the air for five consecutive days as well. Overseas Chinese said that in recent days they have been sending sensitive content on social media sites in mainland China. Those posts were approved as if online police had disappeared. A Beijing-based dissident interviewed by Radio Free Asia said that the domestic security guards in his hometown told him that the entire public security building in his hometown had its 1 to 200 employees become positive, only a few were left on duty. Information from many places indicates that post office systems in many parts of China have been paralyzed. Here, packages are piling up in post offices and there are not enough people to handle them. See, I arrived at this branch. There is no one. Just now, there was a person. I spoke with him briefly. He said he wasn't in charge of this area and left. There is no one around. Would you say everything is still okay? There is no one. Packages are dropped here. That's it. Against this backdrop, the business atmosphere has been reduced to almost nothing. Here, shopping malls and restaurants in Shanghai are empty. This is a dim sum place in Guangzhou, so empty. It's worse to open than to stay closed. It's 9 a.m., Donghu restaurant dim sum time. It is usually packed with people. Earlier in December, Reuters reported that electric vehicle giant Tesla planned to suspend production of Model Y vehicles at its Shanghai plant from December 25th to January 1st. By December 23rd, according to an internal notice and two people familiar with the matter, Tesla canceled the morning shift at its Shanghai plant on December 24th and told all workers they could begin their break. 
Tesla didn't give a reason for suspending production. The Shanghai plant will suspend Model Y assembly at the end of December, which will be part of a planned production cut of about 30% of Tesla's best-selling Model Y for that month. In other words, Tesla is suspending most production at its Shanghai plant early. It seems plans made by multinational corporations can't keep up with the speed of the virus spreading in China. Reuters reported that a person familiar with the matter said workers at Tesla and its suppliers have also fallen ill due to the wave of outbreaks, which has challenged operations over the past week. Tesla is also grappling with high inventory levels and preparing for the downturn in China. In contrast, last December, the Shanghai plant remained in normal operations through the last week, as it isn't a usual practice for the plant to shut down for the year-end holidays. And based on our observations of the outbreak in China, it's likely that this suspension will go from a short term to a more prolonged period, something Tesla might not have expected. In our last episode, we synthesized information from different sources and extrapolated that the outbreak in the capital city of Beijing was already on a large scale as early as late October 2022, when the 20th Communist Party Congress was held. On a national scale, the Xi Jinping government saw from the 2022 city lockdown in Shanghai, Xi'an, and other major cities that the previous three years' zero-clearance policy simply couldn't contain the outbreak, so it canceled its zero-COVID policy on December 7, 2022, without warning nor transition and went straight to a full opening. Since the outbreak in China in early 2020, the National Health Commission had been publishing daily updates on the number of people infected with the virus and the number of deaths nationwide. However, on December 25, 2022, China's National Health Commission stated on its website that from now on, it would no longer publish such updates. It shows that the Chinese central government has lost its bearings in response to the massive outbreak and has yet to devise a decent plan to deal with the public. The day before, on December 24th, some Chinese city and provincial health commissions published data that was already tens of thousands of times higher than the National Health Commission's data. For example, on December 24th, China's National Health Commission announced that the number of new confirmed cases in Zhejiang province on the 24th was 30. However, an official from the Zhejiang Provincial Health Commission said at the Epidemic Prevention and Control Conference that the number of new positive cases of COVID-19 per day in Zhejiang province had already exceeded 1 million. He also said that the daily positive cases would reach up to 2 million before and after January 1, 2023. This figure is 33,000 times higher than the figure announced by China's National Health Commission. Another example is that the National Health Commission announced that the number of new confirmed cases in Shandong province on the 24th was 31. But the Health Commission of Qingdao City in the province said in a media interview that the city infection daily number of new infections is between 490,000 and 530,000. From my perspective, at the moment, most of the friends I know have symptoms, some slightly more severe, but none of them have gone to the hospital. So now, we don't know the data for hospitals. Understandably, China's central government is panicking because the quick spread of the outbreak and the number of people infected is rare in the world. An internal briefing by China's National Health Commission on December 21st disclosed that from December 1st to the 20th, in just 20 days, the cumulative number of infections in China had reached 248 million people, accounting for 17.56% of the total population. The internal briefing from the National Health Commission also mentions that since December of 1,100 infected genomes have been reported from 19 provinces and regions and that 12 Omicron mutations have been identified with the main prevalent strains being BA.5.2, BF.7, and BM.7. Some of these strains have never been found overseas or in other regions. In other words, there are new variants and new mutations in mainland China. It is difficult for the National Health Commission to come up with numbers quickly, or in a short period of time that can be convincing to the Chinese public and the international community while demonstrating the superiority of the CCP system so it has decided to suspend the daily update. The CCP has been using the zero-COVID policy to promote the superiority of the socialist or communist system with Chinese characteristics, by saying that China has far fewer cases than other countries. 
This is probably one of the biggest problems the CCP has faced since the regime's establishment. Mao Zedong, the first leader of the Communist Party, declared that fighting with heaven, fighting with earth, and fighting with people is a great joy. Thus, the Communist Party wanted to fight against heaven and earth. This is in opposition to the traditional Chinese culture that has lasted for thousands of years. Traditional Chinese culture speaks of the unity of heaven and man. Lao Tzu of Taoism said man follows the laws of the earth, earth follows the laws of heaven, heaven follows the laws of the Tao, and the Tao follows the laws of nature. Traditionally, the Chinese speak of heavenly timing, geographical advantage, and the harmony of man. Astronomy, geography, calendars, medicine, literature, and social structure are all intertwined with these ideas and concepts. Chinese emperors believed in the divine and respected heaven, believing that there was a higher power than human beings who were in charge of everything in the world. The emperor called himself the son of heaven, ordained by heaven, and ruled on the will of heaven. The power of moral providence to limit imperial power is very strong. The CCP has, however, never changed its mindset of contending with heaven. The 20th Communist Party Congress ended on October 22nd and adopted amendments to the party constitution. The new party constitution includes the phrase, dare to fight and increase the skills of resistance. The target includes people, nature, and the will of heaven. In other words, the Communist Party believed that it would be able to defeat the virus. But now, it seems like the virus will eventually defeat the Communist Party. The vast majority of patients in China are symptomatic. A significant number of patients have very severe symptoms, such as high fevers, body aches, coughs, and in many cases, severe pneumonia and even a large number of white lungs. Here is a photo posted on social media by a doctor in Beijing who wrote, Are you asking me if I'm scared? We are also flesh and blood, and we are also afraid and apprehensive of being infected for a second time. Although on a global scale, Omicron has a low mortality rate. It's clearly not the case in China. From December 7th until now, the death toll has been soaring everywhere and the mortality rate is very high. As we previously reported, among the first deaths disclosed by the official Chinese media, we saw many retired senior CCP officials, academics, and celebrities. This is a rare occurrence because these people, who were at the top of the hierarchy, enjoyed social resources that weren't available to the public including medical and healthcare resources, foreign vaccines, and the use of youthful blood or organ replacements. The current death toll suggests that the virus has defeated these resources. According to the website of the Chinese Academy of Engineering, CAE, three CAE members passed away in one day on December 26th. The first group of those who passed away were older, ranging from 70 to 90 years old, followed by a decline in the age of those who died at the top and middle levels of the CCP hierarchy. Surely, it has included many ordinary citizens. For example, CAE academician and director of the Shanghai Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Chinese Academy of Sciences academician, passed away at 57 years old. On December 25th, the founder of mainland-listed Shanghai Kehua Bioengineering Co., died of an epidemic infection in Shanghai at the age of 66. The company launched the COVID-19 Rapid Antigen Test Kit this year, which has led to astonishing windfall profits for Chinese nucleic acid test reagent producers over the past three years. A Tsinghua University professor who was one of the designers of the 2008 Beijing Olympics mascot, Fu Hua, died at the age of 67. A professor at Lanzhou University School of Pharmacy died at the age of 51. An associate professor at the School of Medicine of Sun Yat-sen University passed away in Shenzhen at the age of 40. On December 25th, an athlete, a multiple national champion in curling, died in the hospital after resuscitation failure at the age of 27. The news hit the hot search list of Chinese social media Weibo with 370 million views. It is safe to say that the list of Chinese celebrity deaths is growing at a very fast pace just as our video is being produced. What caught the most attention of Chinese netizens was that on December 21st, a Beijing-based netizen posted the news that the 301 hospital is under heavy security in all four directions. And all three nearby overpasses are closed and controlled, so I wonder which national leader is in trouble. 
It has come to the attention of the world that the Communist Party's Central Rural War Conference was held in Beijing on December 23rd to the 24th, with two senior officials at the central level absent. One of them is one of the seven most powerful men at the top of the CCP, Zhao Leji, a member of the Standing Committee of the CCP's Politburo. Overseas Chinese media familiar with the CCP's officialdom have closely followed the CCP's high-level meetings to determine which senior officials may have been infected or even died. China's CCTV network seems to have made an important change, with only Xi Jinping's related reports section on the front page of its official website, and no more video collections related to those of several major CCP standing committee members. It's as if the entire CCP health and medical system have no confidence in any other party members except the party chief. In the face of this epidemic tsunami, the Xi Jinping government has chosen to lie completely and utterly flat. In the late evening of December 26, 2022, the Chinese Healthcare Commission announced the latest rules for foreigners entering China. Nucleic acid testing upon entry and the quarantine policy is abolished. Anyone with a negative certificate for 48 hours before arrival in China can normally enter without applying for a health code. Those with normal health declarations and no abnormalities in routine quarantine at custom ports can be released into the community. International passenger flight capacity restrictions, such as passenger seat limits, are eliminated.